Hello all my fellow 21 Pilots fans. In this video, I'm going to be giving an in-depth music review of their recent album, Clancy. Now, before we get started, I did want to mention that I have a contest going on right now to win a $50 Amazon gift card. I'll have all that information linked in the description below, but basically all you have to do is pre-save my new song. I'm pretty sure I only have like 10 people who have done it so far, so your chances are pretty good. Now, if you love 21 Pilots and this kind of content, be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more Clancy related videos in mind. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so start Starting off with the first song, Overcompensate, I feel like I have so much to talk about with this track. And honestly, one of the coolest parts of this song is this intro piano that goes like this. And musically, what this does is create this really eerie sounding with that E natural. But it's almost uplifting. And it's almost giving this like sense of hope. And then it goes into this really fast synth melody like this. So it sets up all this like fast paced intro, this urgent feeling. And then just like the fall of a roller coaster, it slows down the tempo and drops you into this incredible verse, which honestly that transition is flawless. And how they do it is kind of using these triplets on those toms and it's just, it's honestly, perfect it feels very seamless going into the secondary tempo and there's really so much to talk about this song but just to keep this a little bit short uh, i just want to mention one more thing which happens in the bridge and what happens is everything drops out except for the vocals and this airy kind of pad but what i loved about this part was how the pad is so intentional and it comes in on the off beats which goes along with the flow of the lyrics super well and just musically i think this was a super impressive way to start off the album and then we have next semester which almost serves as a juxtaposition for the very trench sounding song straight into this like pop punk song and musically there is just some crazy things going on with this chord structure so it starts off very clearly in the key of d but it starts on the a chord but what's really cool about what they do in this song is they add a secondary dominant so a five of five on this b major chord which transitions easily into the key of e which we eventually do so all this to say kudos to them for using some pretty intentional music theory and other than that i just really appreciate how fast paced this song is up until the ending obviously it just makes you feel like your heart's racing and it makes you feel what tyler is experiencing and I just think that's something very difficult, but they were able to pull it off. And I also wanted to say that the ending with that slow ukulele is just pure magic. And it was so refreshing after such a fast paced song. It was almost like a chase scene in a movie where you don't know if the protagonist is gonna make it out or not, but they narrowly do. And it's just very satisfying. And then next we have Backslide, which is one of my favorite songs from this album. So what this song does is the chord progression goes just back and forth between a one and four chord, but it does it in a minor key, which is really effective, I think, in making this lost feeling. So the chords just simply go like this, back and forth between the C minor and G minor. And it doesn't really lead anywhere. And all this with the chords and all these lyrics kind of give you this feeling of being run down in a way, almost like you're ready to give up. But then it gets to the chorus, which introduces a new chord progression that is so inspirational. Again, we had this verse that went back and forth between these two chords. And then at the chorus, it goes, And for me, that chorus just really hit me. I think a good song is defined by its chorus. And I think this song was super effective in that. And next we have Midwest Indigo. And to me, everything about this song just screams older 21 Pilots, like back in their self-titled album. The way it starts off with this like garage band synth, the chord progression, and even the way Tyler is singing to me just is so reminiscent of old school 21 Pilots. Also, as someone who lives in the Midwest, I do have a biased appreciation for this song. I think my favorite line from this song is, I'll be pulling into the parking lot before the heat kicks in because I just 
found that so relatable. Another thing that I really appreciated about this song was near the ending, how for a moment they changed things up when talking about sunny days. They literally just introduced a new chord progression, again, at the very end of the song, but only for a moment, and I thought that was just so unique. But yeah, good song, and it was just super relatable. And then we have Routines in the Night, which is another one of my favorites from this album. I love how it starts off the song with the chorus. I'm a huge fan of songs that do that, but not only does it do that, but it starts off the chorus lightly and then it brings it back in. It repeats it with a beat and it's just super good. I think the melody for the chorus is super memorable and it's almost haunting in a sense. I really liked what they did in verse two with the introduction of the new rap cadence, especially with how it blends these different voices together in the same sentence. Like when it says the line, it's tough to find good company. Company is spoken with this lower voice, but the way they morph together is is flawless. It's perfect. I also really appreciated the instrumentation of this song. There are some percussive synths that are brought in on the second pre-chorus. They're kind of a hollow wooden instrument, but it creates a sound that makes a subtle but impactful atmosphere. I think this song is just a great example of everything going right in a song, especially in that final chorus. When everything comes together, it just feels so good. And next we have Vignette. And for this one, I have a comparison that I think fits so well, but I've not heard anyone make this comparison before. But the chorus for Vignette goes like this. Clinging to promises, fighting off a vignette. And here is the hook for the pantaloon. You are tired, you are hurt, and moth they through your favorite shirt. So to me, I took that as an ode to their older music, and whether that was intentional or not, I just really appreciated that nod to their older stuff in this song. And other than that, I just really liked how they brought back certain aspects like the vulture screech in the song. They also brought in this really sick synth solo near the end of the song, which was so good, and I just... I just wanted that to continue and be a little bit longer. And also the context for the song was super strong. The lyrics were very powerful and I just really liked that a lot too. All right, and now on to the craving. And for this one, I wanted to pose a question to you guys. Do you like the Jenna's version better or do you like the single version? I think I'm a little partial to Jenna's version just because it feels more intimate, but let me know what you think in the comments. So musically, I think the chords represent this really bittersweet feeling. Now, I found it very interesting that the chorus starts on a minor chord, especially for a song that's in a major key, because a lot of times a chorus will start off with a major chord because it's more powerful, but here it starts off on this E minor minor, the minor six for the key that we're in, and I just thought that was unique, but again, also adds to this sweet but deep feeling to the song. Also, while well, speaking about the chord progressions in this song, it was crazy to me to realize that we never have a progression end or start with G major. Because we're in the key of G major and it's just super common to either start or end a progression with G. So what this does instead is go and at certain times it goes to this A and C and it just wants to go, but it never does. But overall, I thought it was a very beautiful song, and I loved the music video for this one, especially as a musician, putting in so much effort into crafting something for it to be dismissed so easily. I thought that was a super strong message and really, really hit me. And next we have Lavish. This one was a little difficult to break down, mostly because the whole song just vamps on a B chord. But outside of trying to musically analyze a song, I think this song was fantastic. It has this cool, almost arrogant feeling, and the rap is very reminiscent of Oliver Tree to me. But what was really interesting to me is something someone told me the other day while listening to this song, and it just stood out in my mind, and I can't get this out of my mind. They said that lavish sounds 
Beatles ask? And when they said that, it kind of just like clicked for me and it just made a ton of sense. Like obviously it's very beat heavy and very hip hop, but also it has Beatles elements like the Mellotron sounding synths and just the character of how they speak in the song is super Beatles. I guess a good comparison would be to something like Strawberry Fields where it has those Mellotron synths and it just has this feeling that's just ethereal. All right, now we have navigating and right off the bat, how cool was it to hear that part from next semester? I think that that guitar part is just such a cool touch, like they didn't need to do it. And honestly, this album is just so full of Easter eggs like that. And it is just super satisfying to hear that and draw that line, that connection to that previous song. Now, just in general, this song to me feels like a tribute to the killers. It's very synth heavy and gives this almost 80s vibe. But yeah, listen to that chorus and tell me that's not a killers or X and Y Coldplay song. But all kidding aside, what this song really does is show how versatile 21 Pilots can be making a 90s, like an early 90s sounding song and pull it off like it was nothing. Now, I don't have a ton to talk about with this song other than I feel like 21 Pilots knew what they were doing when they made this song and they nailed every single small detail. And now we have Snapback. Speaking of how versatile 21 Pilots can be, Snapback is so class animals and they made it uniquely themselves. They made it uniquely 21 Pilots and they did it so well. And keep in mind that I'm making these comparisons to the Beatles, the glass animals, to the killers, not to say that they're ripping off these artists, but they're exploring these genres and nailing every one, which I feel like most artists try maybe one or two styles in an album, but 21 Pilots is trying all these and getting it so well. And I think the craziest part is that the album as a whole feels incredibly cohesive. Like it doesn't feel like a Frankenstein of songs. It is one body of work. But Snapback is for sure one of my favorite songs. And I think my favorite part about it is this samba rhythm piano that we hear in the background this whole time. Also, can we talk about how magical this Legend of Zelda fairy fountain like synth is at the beginning. It is just so good. It feels so serene and so beautiful. It just brings you, it draws you into the song. And the song really does a great job of almost like hypnotizing you. It feels like you're floating and I think that might allude to the overall message of the song that Tyler feels like he's drifting. He's going back to these temptations of his early self, which is just a beautiful, it's a deep message. And to put it in a way, it feels like you're trying to stay awake. You're trying your, your hardest to stay awake, but the soft, enchanting sound of sleep is just calling at you. I don't know, maybe that's an overanalyzation of the song, but... I love the song so much and that piano, that samba piano. So good. And next we have Oldie Station, the third to last song in this album. And this song to me has so much charm. And I think a lot of that has to do with these major seven chords that we hear. The song could easily start off with a normal A chord like this, but instead it goes like this. And I think this is super intentional given the title of the song being Oldie Station, because these chords, these A7 and then this D7, are super jazzy, almost like Nat King Cole or Billie Holiday. And the message of the song is great, especially coming right after a song that's about not wanting to fall back into these old habits. This is saying, push on through. And it's another song that kind of harkens back to an older style of 21 Pilots. And I think this one was one of the more refreshing versions of it to a point where it feels 
almost nostalgic. But yeah, a very effective, positive song that I think was placed perfectly in the order of this album. And then we have At the Risk of Feeling Dumb, which is another one of my favorites. I think overall, this was one of the most blurry face feeling songs, and I was so for it. Everything from the drum beat to the rap style of this song, and the vocal effects used with the, like, the doubling of the lower vocals, and that reggae synth, it's just so reminiscent of what we heard in the style of Blurry Face, and I loved every bit of it. And when that guitar comes in in the middle, it's just so powerful. Like the song was in a good place and then it brought in that guitar and it made it so much better. Now I went on a run while listening to this album on a full listen through and the album passed the run test for sure, but this song was by far the best to run to. And finally, last but not least, we have Paladin Straight. Now something that was kind of subtle, but I really appreciated was the strumming pattern for this song being that down, up, up, down, up, up. It gives this syncopated yet relaxed feel that made the song feel resolute in a way. And I know the story isn't over after this song, but it does feel conclusive for this album itself. And I think it really worked in that regard. But I think by far the coolest thing they did in this song was in the chord progression in that hidden ending. Now in the first ending, it goes like this. But in the second ending, it goes like this. Now, if you pay close attention, you'll hear that that G minor chord is changed to a G major chord in the outro. And what this does is gives a brighter, more optimistic feel that I think was genius and honestly probably points to more of the story than we know now. But I absolutely loved that part. I loved how open the ending was and I can't wait to see what comes next. And that, my friends, is my full musical breakdown of Clancy. Again, if you'd like to enter in that contest, I included a link in the description. And if you made it this far in the video and you like what you saw, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe. Like I said, I have a ton of videos in mind and can't wait to share them with you. But thank you so very much for watching to the end here, and I can't wait to see you again in the next video. Until then, peace. Ba, 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 ba.